So boys and girls, you now know how to do the legendary, all-time amazing photosynthesis test. So what we want to look at now is, do you believe what I tell you about the photosynthesis equation? Is carbon dioxide really needed for photosynthesis? Can it do it without it? Is sunlight really needed? Is chlorophyll really needed? These are the three factors that we are going to try removing from the plant and then seeing whether the plant has still been able to go on to make glucose and then obviously make starch, which we then test for. So we're going to do three further tests on three different leaves. So as Miss Emmerich said, we're going to do three tests using three different plants and each one will have been left in a certain condition that removes one of the things that we talked about that is needed for photosynthesis. So in the first one, this plant here which is under the jar, um, inside here is some soda lime. Now what this does is it absorbs carbon dioxide and because we've got a bung here, no more carbon dioxide can get to the plant. So this plant has not had any carbon dioxide for a few days. With the geranium plant on the inside is a jar of soda lime. If we want to see whether carbon dioxide is definitely needed for photosynthesis, the only way to do that would be to take the carbon dioxide away. Now because it's a gas, that's, that's more difficult to do. So we use this substance here called soda lime. Soda lime absorbs carbon dioxide. So we seal the plant underneath a bell jar with some soda lime and given a few hours the carbon dioxide will um, have been absorbed by the soda lime and we can then leave the plant in there for a couple of days to see whether it can photosynthesize. If it does photosynthesize it will produce starch. If it produces starch we can test for that with the photosynthesis test. Plant number two, this is what we call a variegated plant. If you have a look at the leaves, you might notice that it has green patches and it has white patches. So think about what could be missing in the white patches. Can you have a guess? If you said chlorophyll, you're right. So the green pigment chlorophyll that is present in chloroplasts is missing in these white parts. So where's the third plant? Well, if I come over here and reveal plant number three. Now this poor little plant has been left all alone in the dark for a number of days and therefore it's not had any light. Um, so we're gonna see how that affects the starch test as well. Okay, so I'm gonna pick a leaf from the uh, one that hasn't had any carbon dioxide and I need to give it a little bit of a pull because if you look down here it's actually been sealed with some Vaseline to give a completely airtight seal so hopefully it can come fairly easily lift that up and then I'm going to pick I think I'm going to pick this one here okay now I'm going to take one from the one that hasn't had any light so I am going to this one, pass this over to Miss Emmerich. And as you can see at all times, we're keeping it labelled so we know exactly which one is which. What we're going to do now is take each of these three leaves here and do the first step of the photosynthesis test. Do you remember what that is? If you said, put the leaf in boiling water for one minute to remove the waxy cuticle, then you'd have been right. I take this one here. Here is the variegated leaf with no chlorophyll in certain parts. That goes in for one minute. And I'm going to put the one with no CO2 in as well. Uh, and we're not going to put the one with no light in at the moment because it would be very difficult to tell them apart. So we're going to cook that one a little bit later. So we give these one minute in the boiling water for two reasons. Do you remember what they are? Do you remember what they are? I think it's because, first of all, 
we need to remove the waxy cuticle. And the second reason... To stop all life processes. So we'll now remove the leaves from the boiling water. Now the next step is to turn the Bunsen off and it's vitally important that you do not leave the Bunsen on. Do you remember why? If you said because we're about to use ethanol then you'd have been absolutely right. So the Bunsen must be turned off because as you can see on the front here ethanol is highly flammable. What we need to do now is pour the ethanol into each of these three uh, boiling tubes. Each one is labelled so that we don't get them muddled up. And we're going to place the leaves inside. Oh, this one needs to be. Here's the final leaf ready to add to the ethanol. This is the leaf that had no light. So I'm going to place that down into the ethanol here. And then Trevor, Mr. Sexton and I are going to place all three leaves into the hot water bath. So you should start to see the ethanol boiling almost instantaneously and very quickly can you see the change in colour inside the boiling tubes already I can see quite a bit of chlorophyll being released from the burst chloroplasts so we'll leave those now for five to ten minutes okay so five minutes is up so we're going to take the leaves now out of the ethanol Here's one, that one there, I'm going to take this one here. This one is the leaf that had been in no light. But I might tip my ethanol away. So this one here, this was no light. Now you'll notice it's very pale and um, no, chloroph no chlorophyll in the leaf anymore crispy so I need to soften it by dipping it back into the boiling water so there's no light condition. Okay. Okay now it's a bit more and it washes up. Just a no CO2. No CO2, okay. And this one here, no chlorophyll. Well it should really say patches with chlorophyll and chlorophyll and patches without. So let's Dip the variegated leaf in the water to soften it. And then this one here is one of it. Okay. So here are the three leaves after placing in ethanol for 10 minutes. Five to ten minutes. And here is the iodine solution. We can now do the final part of the starch test. So we take red brown iodine solution and we place generously on top of the leaves. And here are our results. So you can see at the top here, that's the normal leaf there, with a really high level of starch in it, making the iodine go blue-black. Underneath here are our three conditions where each time something was removed from the leaf. The first one here, light was removed from the leaf. In this one here, 
carbon dioxide was removed. And in this one here, there was only chlorophyll in certain patches. And if we start with this result here, you can clearly see that the leaf was only able to make starch where the chlorophyll was present. All around the outside of the leaf, over here, these parts, they do not have any starch present at all. The other two here, no light and no carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, where there's no carbon dioxide, there is absolutely no, chlor uh, no um, starch present. And in the one in the light, because we only put that in the cupboard yesterday, so it was just in the process of de-starching. So you can see just a tiny bit of starch on the outer edges of the leaf. But overall, compared to our original leaf, which is essentially our control, then we can see that there really is very little starch left in that leaf. So, an excellent experiment.